so Dynamesh is probably one of the three or four most important things that you need to learn when you start using ZBrush. So in this video, I'm gonna show you what Dynamesh is. I'm gonna show you the couple of main places where you'll use it, and I'll help you get familiar with how I use it with my workflow, and where you should start using it from, from today, really, if you're a ZBrusher. And we'll cover off some of the things that are um, similar to uh, Dynamesh, but very different, like Decimation and Decimation Master. So this is for people who are struggling to get going with ZBrush and need a really clean, clear explanation of what the tools are for. So let's dive right in. So as I always do with these videos, I'm gonna start with the absolute basics. So if you haven't covered off the interface and how to get going with the interface in ZBrush, then have a look at the video uh, up above. And that'll explain to you what I'm using here. Now I'll tell you where the, the things are coming from, where the tools are coming from, but I might be getting them from my own interface, which is where I pull them out on, you know, to make it easier for, for people who are learning ZBrush. So you just follow along slowly, come over to tool. So tool is scrolled open. And then we'll just pick a sphere. So we tap on sphere, drag it into the center of the screen and stop. If you do anything wrong now, you probably will know that this is where you'll start having problems. So hit keyboard T or edit up here, on here. So T will now make it editable. To get your bearings in space, a good thing to do is put the floor on. So you want to go here, which is shift and P. And now when you roll around, you know you've got a, a world that you, you, you might well recognize. It looks like a 3D world. And then when you're using a combination of, I'm using, um, uh, this is actually a Sense Labs stylus, but I'm using um, one click with Alt, gives me the pan, and then just literally tapping outside the model and just rolling around gives me um, the, the ability to roll around. And obviously to zoom in, we just add in control. So basic functions are working now. So um, if you're an absolute beginner, you should be getting really familiar with that sort of stuff. And if we do Shift and F, you can see that we've got a wireframe on there. But remember, we have to make that editable first of all. So we come up here and we go Polymesh 3D and it changes color. That means it's now editable and it's got a polygroup, which is a way of grouping. So if you want to change that polygroup later, it's Control and W and that just changes the color. Doesn't mean anything other than a, an identification of, of, a, of a group of vertices, if that makes sense. So we've got uh, a material here and we'll change it to skin shader so it's nice and light for you to see. And what I want you to focus in on now is that this is made up like a standard sphere. So it's got, it's like a globe. It's got the, the polygons arranged, arranged all the way around it. So if we put X on, and that means we've got symmetry on, and then I'm just gonna, basically, I'm gonna start moving the polygons around. So I'm gonna use Move Tool. So if you're not sure where that is, I mean, I've got them here on the bottom, but it's B and then M on the keyboard. And then you're looking for Move, which is the last one, which is, I can never remember this one, it's V, BMV, obviously. Um, okay, so now we've got Move, we can just literally move this uh, geometry around. Now what, what I want you to notice if you're new to this is that it's stretching the polygons so it's not adjusting them in any way it's just pulling them out and it's, it's moving the vertices if we want to say that so the points and that's dragging the faces around um, and, it's, and it's stretching them out so let's go extreme so let's pull this neck right down and we'll pull it out at the back and you can see there where we've got the pole how nasty that is and then we'll pull it in where we've got the neck and we're going to probably going to want some eyes on this guy eventually so we'll push in here and we'll probably want a nose of some kind um, none of this matters this is li literally just to, to 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 get my my bearings for you and just to show you and um, keep roll as as with all sculpting keep moving around you can't ever look at it just from one angle notice the top as well so you've got the other pole there. And eventually that starts to become a problem that starts to get you to uh, a, a stretched out problem. If I was to carry on down here, you can see, if I do Shift and F off, you can see how it's starting to stretch the polygons down here, which we, we don't want to do. So at this point, this is where you start to use Dynamesh, and this is what Dynamesh is for. Now I've got it up here on my interface, but I'm gonna show you where to get it from first, and then all the rest of it I'll use from up here. So you come down to Tool, Geometry, 
and then in geometry in here you've got your dynamesh now dynamesh is either on or it's off and when it's on it, it you can use it as a tool when it's off you you have to recall it and i'll explain what that means now so with, with dynamesh here you have a resolution and that's the default one is 128 so let's just turn it on and see what it does so watch the model as I do it. So I'm going to switch Dynamesh on and it's highlighted in orange now. And also, if you notice, I've got it up here, as I keep saying, and that's where I'm going to get it from um, in, in, in a minute. So what you'll notice on the model is, is the polygons have all changed. And what Dynamesh does at its core level is it basically wraps a new set of polygons around your model and gives you the, the, the new model. And it's got rid of all of the stretching. So you can see there, it's just evenly distributed the polygons all the way across the body. And that's quite useful. Now, if you undo that, Control and Z, and do it again, but in, in here, so uh, in the uh, Dynamesh resolution, just type 32. This, this is a lot lower. But notice Dynamesh is still off, so Dynamesh is on. And now you've got a much lower set of polygons. It, it, it's basically, you know, it, it much rougher, so with... with um, I'm going to change the uh, to to a clay. You can see it better. There you go. You can see how rough that is uh, as a model. Now you could subdivide that up to give yourself more polygons, but you're better if you find a number that works for you. And the big question that students always say is, what's the right number to Dynamesh? So th there is no such answer to that question because it always depends on what the number of polygons is that you start. So if your model when you start is 50,000 polygons and you do a 32 Dynamesh, it will be very different than if your model is a million polygons. So we'll work through that a little bit as, as we're sculpting. So um, 32 is too low, but, but I would suggest you do keep it low. So let's just try uh, 128 again. And now Dynamesh is still on, as you notice here and here. Um, and if it's on, that means we can keep reusing it. And the way to do that is hold control and tap on your on your on your uh, graphic tablet. So I'll just put Shift and F back on. And if you do it, do it again, control, nothing happens. And that's because you, it will only redynamesh when you've moved some vertices. At least one vertice has to move. So if I move this up, move this one down, and maybe slide the dynamesh up again to a higher number. Now if I do control and stroke up, now it changes. And if I wanted to go down again, so if I move the polygons again a little bit and then change that number back down to 128 again, so 1, 2, 8, and then stroke again, you can see it's brought it back down again. But the, sh but the number of polygons are distributed differently now. And that's because the number was generating from the higher one. So you, you won't ever get the same over and over again. You've got to just learn how to, to, to use this. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll form this head up a little bit. Um, I, I will just dynamesh it a lot lower than that. So I'm going to go 64. And um, remember, I've, I, didn't, I didn't do what I just told you there. I didn't move it, did I? So I've got to move this around like so. And then do dynamesh at 64. And now it's a lot lower. So we'll keep it at 64 while we're doing this next bit. So what I want to do now is I want to shape this bust a little bit better. So I'm going to use clay build up. You can see there I'm just building up the clay. This is his neck. This is his chin line here. Rough as anything. I'm not trying to do anything. You know, I'm, all I'm doing is, is roughing out now. So I'm just looking at my what I call primary shapes. So this this on a, on a creature or a character is a sternocleidomastoid. This is the big um, muscle that holds your, your head up at the front, uh, come under the chin, we want a, a bulk area where the mouth's going to be, we want something to hold where the nose is going to be, a little bit of a shape of an eyeball and a brow, and then I'm going to smooth all that down now, so basically to smooth it down I'm just going to hold shift, use the same brush and just pass over it again. But now what I want to, to show you, let me just put some cheeks in there because he hasn't got any cheeks has he, so give him some cheekbones. And a bit more of a forehead. This is called noodling now because you don't need to be seeing this, but it's very hard to, to not do it. Um, like so. 
and there we have a shape of a head. But it, it, it's obviously very rudimentary. Um, I'll just use the move tool to bring that forehead forward and that neck down. And then we'll have another look at the um, at the wireframe. So you can see there, it's it's not causing any damage particularly. It's not stretching too badly. So you probably wouldn't need to to, to redyne a mesh now. But in in this early stage, why not? So control strike up, and it'll just dyne mesh it. And we just keep going like that. Now, what you might want to do is add in some other shapes. And there's lots of ways to do this in, in a much more complex way. But what we'll do is we'll just add in a cylinder. So we'll just click over here and we'll say, we'll click over here, pick a cylinder, we'll make Polymesh 3D. And what we'll do is we'll go E on the keyboard. And that means we can use the, the gizmo and we'll come down and that'll make our ear like so very 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 rudimentary um, do um, come, come back to our head and now if we say come to sub tool and append and we can append that ear on like so now you do alt and tap on the ear because what you want to do is now um, use that ear and now we just use keyboard w and then we can use the gizmo again so we'll rotate it round, round like this, scale it down, bring it round here. So I'm just using the, the, the basic gizmo to do, the, you know, get it roughly in the right sort of place. Bring it round here. And later on, you'll learn about what are called insert brushes. And you can make these, you know, you could make your ear into an insert brush and drag it on the surface. But that's not what we're trying to do today. Just trying to show you how we get used to Dynamesh. Okay, so if that's on and we're calling that our ear, we might want one on both sides before we move on. So what you want there is, I've got it on the interface here, so I've got mirror, so that would just flip it across. But I've also got mirror and weld across X, and that gives us the two of them across the X, like so. Now you come to your sub tool, go to the top one, and what you want to do is merge it down. So you look for merge down below, and merge down, say always. And now you've got two polygroups and all your models are in one. Now something to note here, if you use the move tool now because it's all in one sub tool, it will, you, you, you can basically move the two together. You can see there, they are separate, but they're moving together. So if you did want to move one um, a, a, a separately from the other, you have to use this tool, which is move topological. So remember that would be B for brush, M for move, and instead of V, you're going to look for topological, which is T. Okay, and now what that means is you can move, depending on which one you're hovering over, so if I'm hovering over the, the blue one, uh, notice it's not moving there when I'm hovering it there, and that's because this is driven by the vertices, and the vertices are at the end, so you'd have to go to where it highlights like that. And that's because there's no polygons, uh, there's no vertices in here in this spiral in the end of it. So we can move that around how it should you need to. We probably don't need to, I'm, not, I'm doing that more just to show you. And that's done now. So what we need to do now is carry on Dynameshing. Now Dynamesh is still active notice. So we'll go back to it on here, just to make sure, in case you don't have my interface, you can see the orange large button is, at, is highlighted. That means it's activated. So what you want to do now is call it again check your number which is 64 we'll change that now back up to 128 and we'll do control and strike up on the um, graphic tablet so now what it's done if you look close up it's welded them together and luckily we've got the polygroups to show you how you know it really shows it there um, but now we don't need that polygroup at the minute that that's for later on really um, so we can get rid of that with control and W now it's all one polygroup and that's how you add in shapes. So you, so you can make the shape, sculpt it, and then add it in. You can use an insert brush, which we'll learn later. Don't even worry about that yet. And you add in shapes like that. So let's now use smooth. So shift and smooth. And we'll just smooth that down. And then we'll use our clay build up. And we'll use the, the alt version. And that means it will go inside and that will intrude in. So we can now start forming our basic shape of our ear. Intrude where you need it. Bit of an earlobe at the bottom here. Notice how it's messing up the geometry again, but but that we, we know that we can fix that now with, with, with Dynamesh. Nice bit of volume around the outside of the ear like that. 
and then control and strike up again and now you're dynameshing so um, smooth that down and you'll have an ear shape built now it looks it, you know it doesn't have to be perfect it doesn't have to be the right size or anything like that what you're after with dynameshing and, and this early part of um, blocking out your character or, or the primary shapes is to get one of everything on there and that's I, I call this the, the, the there's two main stages of your um, sculpting so that you're either in creation or you're in refinement and um, try and remember those terms so if you're in creation mode you can do anything that means you can use dynamesh you can chop things up you can add things you can remove them you can slice them so for example we might want to slice that neck off at the bottom so we'll go P for perspective off and then so it's completely flat roll it round and hold shift and it will snap to the side and then we can use something like um, knife curve which I happen to have down here and we'll just knife off the back like that now as you can see it's given you th this edge and a different poly group well if you do control and W it gets rid of that I'll just make it a bit lighter so control and W to there you go a nice bright green and then we want to strike up and that cleans it so the dynamesh cleans that up for you so that's another good, way, great way to use Dynamesh is to, is to clean things up um, as you're working. So, you know, if, if that's it, you know, if, if, if adding bases on or adding um, uh, flat areas, then that is the way you do it. So perspective off and uh, using the uh, knife curve tool, you can just move around like that. Now, we, we only got that a few versions ago. A knife, believe it or not, wasn't in uh, ZBrush, which is mad if you think about how long ZBrush has been around. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sculpt around a little bit just for a couple of minutes just to now start refining um, the, the, the shape a little bit more to make sure I have got one of everything before I before I move on. So I'm going to bring his nose out. So I'm using a combination of two tools here, just clay build up and move. You don't need to get more complex than that. So just, just start learning these, these tips and tricks with the, the most basic brushes that, that, that you can. We'll leave his eyes as simple as that and we'll just give him some cheeks and then what we do want is this bit here. So I'm going to build the volume up here. Way too, too much. Looks like a tash doesn't it? I'm going to push a hole in here and then I'm going to use this lovely tool which is flatten. I'm going to flatten the underside of the lip. I'm going to flatten where his filtrum is, like so. This is a very, very one-on-one way of making lips. So with those two little moves, make sure that the lips are out and that the filtrum is in. And you've now got that defined top lip shape. So that plane change, as we call it, that, that harsh change there is always needed on a lip one way or another. And if you pull back now, even in this rough state, you can see that we're forming the right shape for a mouth and then go back to our clay build up and we want the two chunks of, of, of fatty pads here and smooth them down and that gives you roughly the shape of your mouth. Now see how rough it is still and because we're using Dynamesh now we, we know that we've got un, uh, the underlying topology there, I'll keep changing it and you can see it's not changing much now because we're not we're not making big sweeping changes you know if we, if, we, if we started adding on a body or if we wanted to now um, and how we would do that, for example, would be hold down control and just tap up here to make sure we've got mask lasso rather than mask rectangle. We'll just mask off the back down here but hold alt and then it will mask everything but that area at the back. And then you can just use your move tool again and just move um, this down. See how it's stretching like crazy? Bring it out like so. And don't worry about all of this mess. This, this is a really horrible, terrible mess. But guess what? Dynamesh is your friend. That's going to fix that in like literally one click. So we do control and strike to clear the mask and control and strike again and it will Dynamesh. Smooth it down. Use the move tool again. Just make sure you've got everything in the right place. So I'm not even using uh, clay build up here. I'm literally just pulling it into the, the shapes that I know I want like so 
and then Dynamesh again, and there you go. You've got a nice upper torso added on in a, in a matter of seconds. So it really is this this simple. Dynamesh is is one of the tools that you have to master very very early on, um, simply because you, you you're going to use that um, all the time. You, you'll have it switched on like this through the whole of these creation project uh, creation times um, during your modeling. So let's put damn standard on. Damn standard is a very, very uh, long-standing brush. It just scores into the surface, so it's a way to give you nice score lines. So, for example, the, you know, if you want scoring around the eyes there, or if you want to even so like score a nostril, um, if you want any creasing, um, you do it with this. Um, so you can, you know, I'm, I'm tucking in these these creases that I want, like so. Um, couple of creases down. I wouldn't normally be doing creases at this point but I, I just want to show you what, what happens with with Dynamesh. That's a mistake there when it sometimes flicks off you know off to the side of the the, 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 the geometry. So just clean that up and then smooth them back down. Use the move tool just to make sure that everything's aligned again. Those eyes have gone a bit weird. Bear in mind his eyes are closed in, in this particular instance. So we want that down like that. I always like to do this on a on a model. A bridge, a, a bridge of the nose is quite square at the top, and we'll bring this nose down. Bring those ears in, and that's almost certainly enough now to carry on. And we'll just smooth it down. So shift and F. Quick look at the wireframe again. Just make sure that everything's looking good. We'll change the um, resolution of Dynamesh to 256 um, and then do control strike up and that now gives us a, a really really nice um, dis evenly distributed model um, for us to then go into the, the, the more detailed part of it. That's the essence of how you use Dynamesh and how you add in another model. Now as I say we'll later on we'll cover uh, insert mesh brushes um, uh, uh, and what you need to focus on is getting that process right. Once you've got to this point, turn Dynamesh off. Because now when you do control strike up, it won't re-Dynamesh. Because the worst thing you want to do is get to a point where you've done um, a nice UV map or you've got it, you know, you've got tons of detail and you accidentally Dynamesh it and don't really notice it and you've lost the underlying work. You have to go back a few stages. So that that is the essence of um uh, Dynamesh in, in a nutshell. If you can get that under your belt that will accelerate your ZBrush learning um, quite quickly. So the second big use for Dynamesh is to prepare things for 3D print. So what we're going to do is have a quick look at this dinosaur head. This is a Carnotaurus head that we've used in other videos and it's got separate head, eyes and teeth and it all needs bringing together and we use Dynamesh to do this. So have a look at the model. Let's just turn that floor off because we don't need it. And the model is made up of, I'll just show you it from a couple of sides. So the model has got a, if we start at the top here, put shift and F on, forgot, I forgot about the tongue actually. So it's got a tongue and then I'll arrow down, you'll see it's got teeth, it's got the head and it's got eyes and all four are separate parts. So what I need to do is join them all together and weld them together ready for 3D print. So not just basically take them all like this. So I could just say, take that one and I could just go merge down, so merge down one. And you can see now it's it's it, it, if you're on that one there, you can go merge down again, merge down again, and now they're literally all one. So they are all in one, and you can even do Control and W, and they're all one poly group. So you could, in theory, print that, but it's much much better practice um, to Dynamesh that into one solid airtight model. And when we say airtight, we, people either say airtight or watertight. What it means is there's a complete surface all the way around the model that's got no holes in it, simply because 3D printing can't have any holes in the surface. If you've got a hole in the mouth, it can't have a polygonal hole at the back of the throat. Um, when you hollow something out, in 3D printing, it has an internal surface, so it's it's not got holes in it. So what we need to do now is we need to basically Dynamesh that into one. So we've got Dynamesh on here and now what happens now is we have to pick a high number. So that resolution now instead of 128 I'm going to set it to 2 
thousand, which is way higher. Hit enter, I'm gonna zoom in and show you what happens. So, and what we'll notice when we hit this DynaMesh now is what it does to the surface. So keep your eye on the surface detail when, when I've run this DynaMesh, so I'll click it on. And you can see that it's pretty much destroyed all of that detail. Now it has welded everything together, so the teeth are welded together, the eyes are welded together, but at 2000, that's destroyed all my detail. So Control and Z, DynaMesh at 3000, and see what happens. No, nope, still too low. So we'll run it all the way to 4096, which is the highest number it can do. And we'll run DynaMesh there. And watch it pop. Now it's still lost a tiny, tiny bit, but actually it's not too bad at all. It's, it's basically kept, um, considering this would only be a print that w w would be about three or four inches, it's kept almost all the detail. Now what it has done is um, it, it's made it about a million polygons now, which might be a little bit too high depending on the 3D printer and the output, it's probably okay. But just to be safe, what you can do is run this here, which is go to Z plugin, which is from up here. Um, we go decimation master, pre-process current, and this will now analyze the mesh here. So we'll let it run for a, a few seconds. And then once it's calculated, then basically we go, I would like to reduce it by say to 20% of its original size and then hit decimate the current and it's done it. Now you can't, you can hardly see it, but it's actually now only 196,000 points there. So that's given me a low poly DynaMesh model ready for 3D print. So you know, the, the, the polygon count is way, way, way lower. Now you've got to decide if that's too low and you might start seeing any kind of um, uh, pixelation on the surface or triangulation on the surface for your 3D print. But if you're gonna print it at say that, you know, three inches or four inches, then you're not gonna see any of that triangulation whatsoever. So they're judgment calls you have to make all the time with when you're exporting your models. But that is probably the, 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 the way I use DynaMesh uh, the second most. I, I use it on almost every 3D print and then finish it with a decimation master. So I hope you're enjoying these videos and if you are, please give us a thumbs up. It does help us to get in front of other people who like this kind of work. And this is obviously ZBrush, but we do cover things like Nomad Sculpt, which is the thing we've done the most in the last couple of years, and Adobe Modeler more recently, and anything to do with creativity where I can help you create in new and innovative ways. So hit the subscribe button, join in with what we get up to, and hopefully you'll uh, improve your creative skills.